only 65% of women reach orgasm, while the number in men is 95. A gap so large, it often makes people believe women are simply harder to understand. But that is not true. They are not more complicated than men. The real issue is that no one has ever truly taught us how their bodies actually work. I am a physician specializing in male sexual health. After more than 10 years of examining and speaking with thousands of couples, I have realized that the difference between male and female pleasure does not lie in desire, but in knowledge. Many men know every muscle of their own bodies, yet remain completely unaware of how their partner's arousal mechanism functions. The truth is, women are not lacking in sensitivity. Their bodies are designed for pleasure, to experience sensations just as intensely as men do. What they often lack is a partner who knows how to touch them in the right place, at the right time, and with the right presence. This is not a personal failing. It is the void left by centuries of limited sexual education, cultural silence, and even medical neglect. But everything can change. Today, I want you to understand the real science behind female pleasure. When you know how her body works, you will see that intimacy is not about technique, it is a language of connection. If you want to learn that science, the one that allows both of you to feel fully alive in every touch, stay until the end. Because what follows is something very few men have ever been taught. Many men still assume that everything they need to know can be summed up in a single word, vagina. In reality, what most people think of as the vagina is only a small part of a much larger structure. The entire external area is called the vulva, a complex space that includes the outer labia, inner labia, the clitoral hood, and the vaginal opening. Each component varies in shape and color from one woman to another. Some have longer inner labia, others shorter, and all of it is entirely normal. But the true center of pleasure lies in the clitoris. If the male body has the penis for both urination and reproduction, the clitoris exists for one purpose only, to create pleasure. No other organ in the human body holds that singular privilege. The small part you can see is only the tip of the iceberg. Beneath the surface lie two deep branches of erectile tissue that curve around the vaginal opening like wings. These structures swell with blood and heighten sensitivity during arousal, responding to even the most subtle touch. Modern research has shown that the clitoris contains over 10,000 nerve endings, twice as many as the gland's penis. That means every gentle touch there transmits a level of sensory information unmatched by any other part of the body. What is fascinating is that the clitoris and the penis originate from the same embryonic tissue. They are two versions of the same biological design, simply developed in different directions. Once you understand this, you realize that her pleasure is not a mystery. It has structure, order, and a precise physiological response. When you learn that map, you also see that the so-called G-spot is not a separate entity. It is not a hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. It is an extension of the same intricate neural network led by the clitoris, a region where sensations converge and radiate outward if you know how to listen with full attention. And from here, we move into the next chapter, where the myth of the G-spot is examined through science and genuine understanding. Is the G-spot real? This question has confused men for decades. Some believe it is a magical key that unlocks every kind of pleasure. Others dismiss it as a fantasy created by movies. The truth lies somewhere between those extremes, grounded in both science and individual experience. The term G-spot comes from Dr. Ernst Grafenberg, who in the mid-20th century described a sensitive region on the anterior wall of the vagina capable of producing intense pleasure but he never referred to it as a single, isolated point. Anatomically, this area is a place where multiple structures meet. The internal body of the clitoris runs along the upper wall, the urethra lies just beneath it, and between them sit the skin's glands. These are all connected by a dense network of nerves, forming a rich sensory field rather than a fixed button. This is why women respond differently to stimulation there. Some feel deep, full pleasure, others experience little to no distinct sensation, and some may find it slightly uncomfortable. All of these responses are normal, 
because everybody's nerve distribution and sensitivity vary. The female body is a spectrum of sensations, not a standardized map. The key is not finding the exact spot, but reading the response. When you touch her, she speaks through her body, through breath that grows deeper or pauses, through subtle movements toward you or slight withdrawal, through sounds that rise or fade. Those signals are the true map of pleasure, and no technique is more precise than your attention. If you wish to explore this region, start from the outside. Give her body time to awaken. When her breathing warms and her skin flushes, that is the moment to move inward. Use your fingertips with a gentle curve, creating a come-hither motion, slow and deliberate. Apply just enough pressure for the anterior wall to firm up, then pause to listen. If she moves toward you, maintain the rhythm. If she grows still or withdraws slightly, ease your pace. Physiologically, when a woman is aroused, blood flows into the pelvic region, the vaginal tissues swell, and the walls become thicker and warmer. This process takes time on average 15 to 30 minutes. If you rush, the blood vessels will not have expanded fully, and the sensation becomes heavy instead of pleasurable. When you are patient, each nerve ending in that area begins to send waves of sensory feedback to the brain, creating pleasure that builds like a tide. This is not a treasure hunt. It is an art of listening. And what most men forget is that pleasure does not depend on speed, but on slowness, just enough for her body to open like a flower touched by light. The male and female bodies speak two different languages when it comes to time. For men, it takes only two to five minutes for blood to flow, nerves to awaken, and the body to become ready for stimulation. For women, however, that prelude can last 15 to 45 minutes. This is not slowness or difficulty, it is their biological rhythm. A woman's vascular system needs time to open. As blood moves into the pelvic region, the tissues begin to swell, the mucosal layer becomes warm and soft, and the cervix gradually rises while the vaginal canal lengthens and expands. Medicine calls this phenomenon vaginal tenting. The entire process is like a flower unfolding slow, beautiful, and impossible to rush. This difference in timing is the main reason many women do not reach orgasm. It is not due to a lack of desire, but because their bodies have not yet opened. They have not been given enough time to prepare for connection. Meanwhile, men, driven by quick reflexes and shaped by the speed of pornography, often skip the most important part. They rush into the middle of the story while the opening notes are still playing, and the experience ends before it truly begins. One of the most common misconceptions is believing that if she is wet, she is ready. Moisture is not the sole measure of arousal. It is influenced by hormones, cycle phases, medication, stress, and emotional state. Some women lubricate as a reflex with little actual arousal, while others may feel intense desire but remain dry due to fatigue or anxiety. That is why lubricant exists, not as a sign of failure, but as an intelligent tool to support nature. A thin layer can ease friction, enhance comfort, and allow the body to relax. Just as a machine runs more smoothly with a bit of oil, it helps the body move with grace and endurance. If you pay attention, her body will tell you when she is ready. Watch her breath shift from short to deep, her heartbeat quicken, her skin warm and change color. If you rush while the mucosa is still tight, each movement can cause discomfort or even micro tears. But when you wait, as blood fills the tissues, the vaginal walls become soft, warm, and responsive in a completely different way. Real pleasure begins when both bodies move in sync. The men who are truly skilled in intimacy are not the ones with special techniques. They are the ones who count by breaths, not minutes. They observe, let her body lead, and know how to wait. A man who can wait gives another person's body permission to speak. And when he listens, every small movement becomes a conversation, every breath a mutual agreement. When body and time align, pleasure stops being a destination. It becomes a chain reaction natural as a heartbeat spreading through every muscle, every cell, until both dissolve into a single rhythm. That is when the real climax begins. When pleasure reaches its peak, 
a woman's body enters a sequence of perfectly orchestrated reactions. The pelvic floor muscles contract rhythmically, each pulse only seconds apart. The cervix lifts slightly, the uterus tightens, and the heart rate can rise to 150 beats per minute. Breathing becomes short and rapid, and the body may tremble as waves of sensation travel from the lower abdomen through every limb. It is the moment when body and mind merge, when the boundary between consciousness and reflex disappears. During this stage, some women experience an increase in fluid release, occasionally with a visible expulsion known as squirting. This is a natural biological reaction, occurring when the skin's glands and the bladder simultaneously release fluid during intense arousal. The liquid is not urine but a clear solution containing specific enzymes, including prostate-specific antigen, PSA, similar to what is found in men. Yet it is essential to understand that not all women experience this, and it is not a sign of whether an encounter is successful or not. Some never squirt and still reach deep satisfaction. Others may do so often without seeking it. What misleads many men is not a lack of information, but a lack of presence. They fall into seven common mistakes, moving too fast, pressing too hard on the clitoris, changing technique just as she nears climax, entering before her body has opened, chasing the result instead of enjoying the process, ignoring her physical cues, and worst of all, treating her pleasure as a test of their masculinity. The solution is simpler than most think. Observe. Ask. Let her lead. A single question can change everything, such as, Do you like it when I do this? Or, Would you prefer it slower? or deeper. When you invite her to speak, you open a door to trust. Female pleasure is not only triggered by touch, but by safety. When a woman feels heard, her body releases oxytocin, the hormone of connection, and dopamine, the hormone of pleasure. These chemicals increase blood flow, deepen muscular contractions, and extend the waves of orgasm. A woman reaches climax through trust first, pleasure second, and only when she feels safe enough to surrender does orgasm become what it was always meant to be the meeting of two souls, not merely the reflex of two bodies. What I want you to remember after everything we have just explored is that sex is not a problem to be solved. It has no single formula, no quick tricks, and no secret techniques that can replace the work of listening. Pleasure is a skill shaped by attention, respect, and presence. Men are often taught that they must perform, must make her climax, must prove something. But the moment a man turns intimacy into a competition with a woman's joy, he loses connection altogether. Her body does not need a warrior who comes to conquer. It needs a companion sensitive enough to know when to move forward, when to pause, and when to simply hold her hand and breathe together. There is no magic button called the G-spot, no hidden move that guarantees pleasure. There is only resonance the kind that grows when you listen, when you let her body lead instead of forcing it to follow your rhythm, when you care more about her experience than your own pride. True confidence is not about how many times you can make her climax. It is about how safe she feels to be fully herself with you. When a woman feels free, when the fear of judgment disappears, pleasure does not have to be found. It emerges naturally. And that is when you realize that sex is not merely a physical act but a language of trust. A man who understands this no longer chases proof of his masculinity. He simply enjoys being present with the woman he loves in every breath, every touch, every look. If this message resonates with you, click like, subscribe, and share this video with a brother or friend who needs to hear it. Stay strong, stay magnetic, and I'll see you in the next episode of Men's Health Secrets.